Okay, first of all, why should anybody make a guide about oil lanterns and oil lamps? I tell you why. I personally think they are most of the time underrated and are not used to their full potential. Especially from players who are new to the world of Hunt Showdown and struggle with a low tier hunter without any high level guns. Therefore, welcome to the Hunt Showdown guide for the oil lantern and the oil lamp. Why should you watch it? This guide is handy for every new player because there are nearly no level requirements needed to gain a benefit from this guide. But even an experienced player may find one or two tricks he didn't know yet. So let's get right into it. We will start with the oil lanterns. We will have a look at the damage they do against every single monster in detail. The grunt, the armored, the hive, the hellhound, the meathead and his leeches and other players. Afterwards we will have a look at how you can use them in combination with your environment and then we will jump right to the oil lamps. As nearly all of my videos this one has timestamps as well so if you're interested in only a specific enemy or a specific scenario you can look it up in the description and in the pinned comment. One last thing I created this guide before the game got released, this means the clips are from the closed alpha and early access, so there will probably change a few things. I will track these updates and I will put them in the pinned comment as well. But since I saw in their discord that a lot of especially new players struggle with the game, I decided to make this guide right here, right now. The oil lantern can be found everywhere on the map, but especially these red boxes. Normally there are 3 to 4 in them, but there are even boxes, especially at boss locations, where they put a few more in it. Which even surprises me sometimes. What the hell? But now let's burn a few things. Let's start with the grunt. With right click you can aim with the oil lantern and with the left click you throw it. You have this blue line which helps you to aim at your target. After the last patch the grunts are pretty fast. So even if you burn them they come full speed at you. So get a few steps behind and just watch them burn. Quite enjoyable. By killing enemies with oil lanterns you set the whole area on fire. This can come in quite handy since you block the whole path. If you set your target on fire and they step into water, they keep burning. If your target is already in the water, you can still burn them. Surprisingly, if your target is in the water and you hit them with the oil lantern, they start burning and they keep burning, even the ground is burning. I don't think this is intentional, but that's just how it works right now. I hope Crytek will fix that. But be aware, only setting them on fire does not kill them every time. If your lantern misses and only sets them on fire, the fire effect wears off after a few seconds and you have to finish them off with a melee attack or by shooting them, whatever you prefer. So to sum it up, if you hit them directly, they will die. No matter if they are on solid ground, in the water, run through water or whatever. Fun fact, every grunt who runs into the fire will die and not survive, as you have seen in this clip and in the first one. Now let's jump over to our next monster, the Hive. After the patch they raised her hit points by quite a bit, so let's see if we can burn her with a lantern. Carefully aim. Go a few steps back, because her bugs are really no joke anymore, especially for tier 1 hunters. But as it seems, the fire seems to be pretty effective. There are a few spots where you can't melee them and if you don't want to make too much noise, like for example shooting, the lantern is a valid option. 
However, fun fact, if you trigger her and she comes towards you, even a direct hit with the lantern will not kill her. The fire effect will wear off. So you have to shoot her to save your life, because as you can see on a tier 1 hunter, your hit points drop really quickly. And to show you that it's not because she was in the water, I will kill another one. I triggered her a little bit later, she stays longer in the fire, so the fire effect stays way longer on her and she dies. Therefore, don't trigger her, throw it directly on her, easy game. Alright, let's see how the lantern does against the armored guys. Apparently pretty good. Not just pretty good, goddamn. Every armored is a one shot with a lantern. And he dies really quickly. So if you see an armored guy, grab a lantern and take these easy 60 experience points. I think these are the easiest experience points you can get in this game. I don't know why, but I enjoy this way too much. Now let's have a look at the hellhounds. They're pretty fast. Their damage output is pretty high, they two shot every tier 1, tier 0 hunter and if you don't upgrade your hit points, even a tier 2 hunter. Normally you can kill them easily with one throw, because they group up a lot. But as you just saw, one of them went off to the left, catched fire and obviously didn't care very much about it. So here's the perfect way to do it. Sneak up, do not trigger them, throw it and sneak back. But you see they're still in the fire and they just don't die. One of them even charges me. Which is quite ridiculous. To sum it up, stay away from the hellhounds if you plan to kill them with a lantern. Because if more than one charge at you and you panic, you die. So the Hellhounds are not really a good target for the Lantern, because their trigger range is pretty far and if you fuck it up, you're in big trouble. So if you want to kill them, I recommend shooting them. As an unexperienced player, maybe walk around them. The final enemy that we will analyze in this guide is the Meathead. Now, why should you even kill those giants? Well, they give a pretty huge amount of XP. If you look here, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 leeches and the Meathead itself. One leech gives 10 experience points and the Meathead 100. So, killing this group right here gives 190 XP. In comparison, Killing a player gives 150. The aggro range is pretty short, so you really... You can't trigger them by accident. You have to get really, really close. And just... Well, my testing gets interrupted and that's the perfect example why you don't make a lot of noise in Hunt Showdown. Now, let's get back to our meathead, which... This uh Piet. Great, I have to find a new one. Okay, here's a fresh one. You can wait until they pass a barrel and then throw the oil lantern to get even a better result. However, an explosion will trigger them to run out of the fire, which you don't want, but we will get to that later. 
This is now our second lantern and he is burning quite well. He seems not to enjoy that. Well, I can understand him. So as you can see, I didn't even gather any oil lanterns in advance. Because it's not really necessary. There are so many on the map, especially in the big compounds, that you don't need to. No. And here we go. This will rise our oil lantern count by one. Eat one more. This should do the trick. I hope. So this is the ideal situation. He stays in the fire and takes the damage non-stop until he falls over. Great! Now you can say, but hey, there was an explosion. How about without explosion? Well, here we go. This is a fresh one with all the leeches. He stays perfectly in the fire. I found a second one. Not a good throw. Now the count goes up to three as soon as it stops burning. Finally, come on. Nice. So, and as you can see, a few leeches seem to be immune to fire, but hey, this is probably a bug. And here we go with our fourth lantern. And I have the fifth in my hand, but he already burned to a crisp. Success! So you need four lanterns to burn them. But, now the question is, do you really have to wait until the fire effect goes off, or can you like chain these lanterns? And therefore I have this little test right here displayed. We have one meter, this is already the second lamp, and I'm going to throw the whole box at him. I'm not waiting until the fire effect goes off, so now I'm going to throw eight oil lanterns on his head. And as you can see, this is quite the big barbecue. And now the hit. The final oil lantern. Which is on the left this time. And now we wait. So this is double the amount with even a yellow barrel that exploded. And he stands perfectly in the fire. And it's not enough. So as you can see, waiting for the effect to wear off is more efficiently and has the same result. Now, let's finish him off. And this exactly is the moment where I realized that my next tutorial will be about melee weapons. Alright, let's head over to the PvP section of this guide. What happens if you get hit by an oil lantern directly? My friend Marcus right here will yes, throw the oil lantern the directly in my face so and we one. will see what happens. In a couple of seconds we will try it without being in a group so we can compare damage. Because a few of you already might know, if you get shot by your teammate, damage is reduced. So my first impression is, there's no real difference. It's just like if a zombie hits me with a fire swing, or the butcher hits me with a fire swing, it's just a normal fire effect. But still, we will compare it now with my friend not being in the same group with me, so we solo queued both on the same map. And as you can see, it applies only the burning effect. The thing that is interesting is about the oil lantern, there is no explosion damage. This explains a lot regarding the meathead fight. There is no impact damage with oil lanterns. So it doesn't matter at all if you throw one, two, three or four oil lanterns at a target. You're just applying the fire effect and that's it. And it does not stack. Okay. Then, fun fact. 
What happens if somebody is carrying the oil lantern and you shoot the lantern? Absolutely fucking nothing. This is kind of boring, because if you can pull it off mid-combat, you should be rewarded. So I will write a little suggestion in the close up of form from Hot At this point you might say, so Mike, it seems that the lantern is pretty useless in PvP. And this is where I strongly disagree. It's probably the most important tool in team games. For example, if you down somebody and you don't know if he's solo or his teammate is still around and he's hiding, throw a lantern on the downed player. You will apply the burn effect on him and his life bar will burn until it reaches zero and that means his teammate can't revive him anymore. So, this has two benefits. First of all, you finish him off. That's the nice part. Additionally, you apply a lot of pressure on his teammate to pick him up before his life bar burns down. Therefore, every time I play solo this game and I down somebody, I always burn them because I don't know if there's a teammate around or if he's dead for good. Let's have a look now how we can interact with the environment and the oil lantern. Are you getting tired of Cross giving away your position? Like here. Oh here. Two things are annoying right here. The first thing, they make a lot of noise. And the second thing is, they give away your position visually by rising to the sky. Now, did you actually know that you get a hit marker if you shoot the crows? So, how about we try to burn these little bastards? Huh, it works. So you still have a little bit of sound by breaking the oil lantern, but the visual indicator is completely erased. Sometimes there are a few paths where it's just plain annoying to go around the crows and maybe you have an oil lantern right next to you, so use it. However, this needs a little bit of practice, because if the oil lantern doesn't land at the exact sweet spot, it's not working. But as always, Practice makes perfect, so have fun burning a few crows. Tell them I sent you. Then, next interaction. Surely you have already seen these yellow barrels. Sometimes you have this oil layer around them, so, I mean, this is quite basic, but still, you can use the oil lantern to burn the oil layer and then ignite the barrels. And I have to say, I'm quite impressed regarding the size of this barrier. Not only will 99.9% .9 of the players not run through there, additionally it even blocks most of the vision. Then red barrels. Throw the lantern at it, that makes boom. Simple. Then please don't hate me what I'm going to show you now. I'm just saying it works. And this is only for science, okay? So we have this little poor horse that we want to put out of its misery and... What the? Sometimes I forget that I'm playing an alpha. Let's see if this one is magical as well. It's not. So we have only one silent noise. And then it can finally rest in peace. And it's not making any noise anymore. This tutorial is really bad for my karma, but um, hey, you can burn these little guys as well. Just throw it over the fence. If you have the bounty and you need to extract it, it's a good idea to clear the path beforehand. Yes, they can track you on dark side, but still, the first seconds after leaving the lair are quite crucial and it can make a difference. One last thing, then we go over to the oil lamp. Shooting the oil lantern does absolutely nothing. Now, this is an oil lamp. I know, I know, hold your horses. By shooting the lamp, you ignite a fire. 
not an explosion. However, as it seems right now in the closed alpha, they do not trigger explosive barrels or any barrels. As you can see, I'm not really trusting that red barrel right there, but um, the fire stops and everything is fine. As it seems, they don't interact with anything, because for example right here, I'm shooting the oil lamp and the door doesn't care, so it's not like that you can burn doors or windows and stuff like that. But there are a few times where the oil lamp is pretty useful. This right here, the experienced players know it already, is the lair of a boss. This is one of the paths to get to the lair. As you can see, I turned on the oil lamp at the ceiling. Watch me shoot it. And I think this is really neat. You're blocking the whole entrance. If you run through this, you will get the burn effect. But that's not all. If we look from the other side, it's nearly impossible to spot people sitting behind the crates. So this burn effect is already pretty annoying, but additionally you block off the vision. If you get pushed and you get shot and you need time for example use your medkit. Shoot the oil lamp. This is another layer and for example right here you can seal off the entries as well or doors. So if you know people are for example camping there, you can seal them off and run to the other exit. However, always be very cautious with this move. They don't always work like you think they would. For example right here I tried to block off the stairs with these two oil lamps and surprisingly that didn't work like I think it would do. Fun fact, you can't melee these lanterns. I don't think this is intentional, so the only way to break them is shooting them. Then I don't know how useful this information is, but I try to cover as much as possible. Uh, it's pretty difficult to make a guide if people are shooting like outside. If you shoot the lamps, they lose oil. And you can ignite this oil with a fuse. I think this is just for your information because to pull this chain reaction off in combat somebody has to hide right next to a lamp. You have to shoot the lamp, you have to throw the fuse. I think if you can pull that off you can really just shoot them. But this doesn't work always. Again this scenario has a hook. I'm going to turn off this lamp, I'm going to shoot it and you see the oil spilling over the barrel. Now a fuse thrown to the ground right next to the barrel will not ignite the oil. So you actually have to throw the fuse on the barrel. So if you ever want to pull that off, I think you should know that. Additionally, I don't know why. Sometimes they do not lose their oil. And, and I don't think that all of them work like they should. For example, I switch this one off, I shoot it. There is no oil and it floats. And I even confirm it with a fuse, there is no oil. So it's fine, we, we are playing a closed alpha. This is not a finished product. I just want to let you know, do not rely on oil lamps and their spilled oil to ignite it with a fuse in combat. Just don't fucking do that, alright? However, if they are turned on and somebody is standing under the lamp, ow, that works ow, damn ow, fun. Ow, ow. And it's pretty hilarious. This is the last trick that I want to show you and it's the only one that has a level requirement and that's where it's at the end. You have to reach a certain level to buy the silenced Nagant. If you have it, you can shoot the lamps to silence the dogs and the chickens. Now a few fine words before this guide ends. I'm not 
claiming that this guide covers everything you can do with oil lanterns slash lamps. But I still think this guide turned out to be very detailed and I really hope all the work that went into making this guide will result into a few people having an easier time playing on the shoulder. Furthermore, this guide only shows what's possible. It's not telling you to play exactly in the way I showed you. Because in my opinion, the golden rule in Hunt Showdown is to not make any noise at all, if possible. But if you want to farm some experience, or you think you're the last one on the map, spoiler, you are never the last one on the map, this will most certainly help you. On top, if you want to kill something in PvE, burning them, the way I showed you, will always make less noise than shooting. Just keep in mind, we play a game where crouched footsteps in a forest or even just grabbing the clue may already make enough sound to seal your death. At least when I'm around. Sometimes. We are now at the end. I hope this guide was able to help you a little bit. It got way longer than I thought especially for a guide about oil lanterns slash lamps. I will make more in the future, so consider subscribing if you are interested in Hunt Showdown content. In the top right corner of your screen, you will find a playlist with edited gameplay. And in the bottom right corner, a little video regarding the voiceover contest for the grunt. Enough of my whoring for subs and views. There's only one final thing to say. Have a nice day and bye bye.